Hello everyone, so we will be uh, creating a program which will be using a mutex lock uh, and the mutex lock will be used by two threads and I will demonstrate to you uh, how both of these threads are able to run in parallel and then they are able to run sequentially using this mutex lock. So I am going to create, uh, first of all I am going to create uh, the threads. So I am going to type the prototype for both of these threads, I am going to call it uh, void star thread one and I'm going to have a return value with void star uh, return type called argument and uh, this will be the first thread and the same prototype will be used for thread two so I'm going to create these threads uh, below over here and uh, this is the code for this would contain the code for thread one and uh, this code block will contain the uh, code for thread two. As you know that uh, when, you, when you use uh, pthread create, you should be able to create a thread. In order for the, uh, for the pthread or the thread uh, to be created, we, uh, we have to have a, a variable which stores the TID of that thread. And the variable type for uh, that uh, variable is pthread underscore t. And I'm going to call it uh, an array of size 2 uh, with name tid. And then when, when I use pthread underscore create, I will be passing the address of the first element of this thread. And then I'm going to pass null. And then I'm going to give the ID of the uh, of the thread, the name of the function thread. And then I'm going to, instead of arguments, I'm just going to send null. So this uh, line essentially creates a thread. And I'm going to copy this line for the second thread. And I'm going to use the second TID value to store the TID of the second thread into this array. So these lines will essentially create the threads based on these functions and these uh, threads will start running. So the objective for each of these threads is very simple. I'm just going to print out a character from each of the threads. So each of the threads simply prints out a character. So this thread, for example, creates a hyphen or a dash sign and uh, the other, you know, thread uh, uh, prints out an X mark or X character and both of these threads they do these things you know in a loop so I'm going to use this loop to for example print out 200 of uh, these characters I'm going to do the same for the second thread and when this uh, function, the main function returns, after running the threads, I'm going to join uh, the threads to the main function using uh, this line, where we have to mention the TID of the thread for which we are uh, forcing the main function to wait for the thread to finish. And I'm going to copy paste the same uh, line for the second thread ID, TID1. And now we have both the threads joined to the main function. So this code should essentially, uh, you know, uh, run both the threads and uh, 200 of hyphens and 200 of X's should be printed on the screen in parallel by both of these threads. So let me uh, run this. Uh, so this line should actually be, so we're going to see the output of this program. So you can see that uh, if I run this program multiple times, I see that uh, there is not much difference, but some of the iterations of running this program shows that uh, the X's and the hyphens are actually mixed up together, uh, which indicates that the hyphens and the X's, they are uh, being printed in parallel. So both of, both of the threads are running in parallel. Whereas the first instances that we ran this program, uh, it indicates that both the threads, they got the chance to uh, do all of their work independently. So in order for the programs to get enough time for each other, 
uh, uh, enough time to you know print these i'm going to put these printing things uh, uh, after a delay so in order to introduce a delay i'm going to uh, use this line and i'm going to do this with both the threads so that whenever a character is being printed out there should be a delay experienced by each of the each or each of the character so let's increase this delay a bit but now you see that uh, this uh, printf is not working as we expected why because printf works in such a way that it does not immediately give uh, gives the output uh, even if uh, the printing is done is being done uh, you know at a fixed interval of time so in order to correct this we will have to use this line after the printing so that every time uh, the printing is done the buffer for printf is uh, cleared out so let's see the output now now you see that printf is working as expected and now you actually see the parallelism going on that uh, uh, once one of the threads uh, prints a character and then because of this uh, long delay uh, in terms of the cpu it's a very long delay the next thread gets a chance but sometimes you see that uh, the this thread thread number two it prints two x's together or sometimes the thread one it prints two of the hyphens together so if i decrease this delay i should be able to see multiple of these uh, you know hyphens or x's being printed together so now let's uh, i've decreased the delay and let's see the output so now you can see that now more of these hyphens and x's are being printed uh, in one instance of the thread or one you can say time slot uh, which was allocated to the thread so i'm going to put back the same delay and now i'm going to introduce the lock so this intermingling or mixing of these x's and hyphens is something which gives us a proof that both of these threads are running in parallel but now what i would like to do i would like to make the sequential meaning then that whenever meaning that whenever this thread is running this thread should not be able to interrupt the running of this thread so let's introduce this uh, functionality how first we are going to define a lock so we we are going to write this line over here right after right before we create the threads before because this is something related to the entire program so i'm going to write this line p thread mutex initialize with with a variable lock when you use the mutex uh, part of the p thread library you will have to define the lock variable using the data type p thread underscore mutex underscore t p thread underscore mutex underscore t this is the type for the variable lock once you have uh, created this variable and you have initialized the lock variable according to this uh, or under the supervision of this library p thread now you are able to apply the lock on both of these threads so how i am going to apply the lock is that i am going to whenever a thread starts i am going to apply the lock and whenever the thread ends i am going to release the lock so there are system calls or apis available in this library p thread to apply the lock and to release the lock to apply the lock the api is called p thread underscore mutex underscore lock and then in the in the argument of this function you have to mention the lock with an ampersand sign because you will have to send the address of this lock variable to the to the library and then when you uh, when the thread finishes running you can use the p thread mutex unlock function to unlock this lock right so i'm going to uh, copy the same thing to the second thread and uh, let's see what the output is so now i'm going to run this now you see that uh, very different from the previous uh, iteration of running this program now whenever the hyphens are being printed the x's are not interrupting the hyphens and whenever the x's are printing the hyphens are not interrupting the x's so i'm going to run this a couple of times so you can see every time i run this program uh one of the x's or the hyphens is going to print it first and uh, the other one is going to be printed later on 
and none of these characters are going to interrupt each other no matter what so this gives us an evidence that now this thread which was printing the hyphen which was the th first thread is running in sequence and the second thread is also running in sequence or in sequential order the ordering can differ of course the scheduling depends on how the operating system schedules the uh, threads but uh, you know uh, either this thread could run first or this thread could run first but no matter how long this thread runs this thread is not going to interrupt this thread the first thread and similarly no matter how long the second thread runs the first thread is not going to be able to interrupt the uh, second thread so uh, this is how you uh, we have implemented the sequ sequentialism and let me introduce a new functionality here so that i'm able to select um, and by the way there is another line which should be added which is the uh, pthread mutex destroy lock which uh, officially uh, you know frees the uh, operating system of taking care of this variable lock and uh, so uh, let's introduce that functionality that i'm talking about which is that uh, for example if i uh, create a variable called int and i call it enable and i ask the user at this point at the very beginning of the program that uh, enter one if uh, or to you know enable mutex and zero to disable the mutex so the user go is going to enter this and i'm going to use canf to take this value in and uh, i'm going to use person d over here and i'm going to uh, mention the enable variable name over here and now i'm going to simply uh, make the locking of the uh, of the thread using mutex lock and unlocking uh, in a condition using if uh, if uh, function like this if enable is one and i just need to write this part because uh, this will essentially uh, only let this thing run if enable is equal to one so i'm going to put this over here and put this over here and put this over here so it allows me to run this program many times and uh, at the same time see the output for see the output for you know different uh, you know versions of the same program so so i had to write the an ampersand sign before enable because you have to pass uh, the address of enable variable to scanf and now let's compile and run this program so if i enter enable mutex you will see that the hyphens are going to run uh, separately and uh, the x's are going to uh, you know be printed separately and now let's uh, run this thing again with uh, disabling the mutex and now you see that the hyphens and x's are being uh, you know uh, mixed together why because this uh, entering the zero thing disabled the mutex by you know not running the pthread mutex lock and unlock commands and now you can see that the threads are being run in parallel so if someone uh, wants to make a comment about parallelism and sequen uh, sequ sequential running of the threads they can say that in this part the threads are running in parallel and in this iteration the threads are running sequentially so they are mutually exclusive so in this case because of the mutex being enabled the threads are running uh mutually exclusive and in this part the threads are running in parallel so now you can actually uh for your uh you know uh exercise question in order to test your concept i would like you to uh do something so what you need to do is you need to uh, uh you know simulate the behavior of this program in such a way that there is a possibility of a deadlock so i want you to create two uh locks and locks each of the locks will represent one resource right so lock 1 equals resource 1 and lock 2 equals resource 2 and just like before just like in this case we have two threads and both of these threads are going to uh request these resources in a very particular way and which is that 
uh, thread one is going to you know lock uh, on uh, lock one first and it is going to lock on lock two second and similarly uh, the second thread is going to do uh, a similar thing but in a different order that uh, thread two is going to lock on lock two first and then on lock one second and uh, you should introduce a delay uh, between uh, you know requesting these locks so just like the delay that i have mentioned over here you should be using the same delay this this type of delay you know a loop which runs for like six f's or five f's and uh, so there also should be a delay of you know let's suppose five f's a loop running uh, up to five f's and uh, like this so and if uh, for some reason this line executes uh, you know first and this line also executes at the same time after like this line and both of these lines they fail to uh, run there should be a message displayed on screen that there is a deadlock so right i'm going to write over here that uh, for example let me call this line a and let me call this line b and let me call this line c and let me call this line d so if lines a and c have run without having lines b or d run you have to you know display deadlock occurred so try this out uh, this code out and let's see if you're able to uh, simulate the working of this deadlock and uh, there will be instances when uh, this this thing can be displayed and there will be instances when uh, where this will not be displayed because uh, there's a probability that uh, line a and line c uh, runs uh, and line B and line D they don't get get to run right so this is the uh, the task associated with this uh, code yeah so this is the complete code just for your uh, final view if you want to copy this code out and uh, thank you